subject of exorcism has been discussed in the United States frequently lately. He said, your sons have exorcisms and claim to be able to cast out devils, and if my casting out of devils is by the prince of devils, what power do your sons use? And that's the argument which he is using here. And then he turns back and makes a further application in verse 28, but if it's the, by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, and not by Beelzebub, then the kingdom of God is right here among you. And he said, no man can actually rob a man's house if the man is home, unless he ties the man up first. And we, all, we see on our popular police uh, episodes that people are tied up and then they're robbed. And Jesus applies this very simple thing. He said, the only way that I can despoil Satan is if I bound him first if I am in control of him, if I am more powerful than he is. Uh, then he makes a further application. Read verses 30 down through 32. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever says a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The good man out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil man out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you on the day of judgment, men will render account for every careless word they utter. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. I am going to limit my comments to the last part of verse 34. Out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Many times in a spirit of carelessness or a spirit of anger or when we've been caught off guard or didn't know the other person was listening, we say things that we never intended to say in their presence. And then we make the excuse, well, I did not really mean it. Now, this is extremely lame. If you go to a um, magician's performance, and he has this hat, which he so carefully shows to you that's empty. Turns it inside out, up and down, puts his hand in it, lets an assistant come up and put his hand in it. He finds nothing there. And after a little bit of hocus pocus, all of a sudden, out of this hat by the ears comes a rabbit. There's nobody, and then he lets him down, he hops around the platform. It's a genuine rabbit. Now, there's nobody in that audience that believes that that man hatched that rabbit at that moment. He knows that somewhere that rabbit was already concealed. If the rabbit ever gets out on the platform, he was already born days before, weeks before, and was hidden someplace, or he wouldn't have come out. Rabbits don't come out of genuinely empty hats, or out of genuinely empty boxes. One time, a number of years ago, back in the times when you um, got to where you needed a set of tires for your car and you wondered whether to buy a, a set of tires or buy a car, I went into a used car lot. A car was not there that I would want and so the salesman took me to a second lot. The second man did not know that I was a minister. And there was an old Packard sitting there which he began to praise in very profane terms until finally the first salesman said to me, I said to him, Sir, uh, our customer is a minister. And he rather flippantly said, to, Oh, I'm sorry, he said to Reverend, he said, uh, I didn't mean anything by it. He said, It's just a, just a habit of mine. I don't ordinarily do this, but somehow his manner of being so flippant bothered me. And I said to him, uh, Do you know what the Bible says about that? Surprise? He said, No, I don't. I said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. 
and a great red tide came up his neck and hit his ears. But it's true. He spoke profanely because he was profane. It would not have come out if it was not in there. And when we say something, we may not have let, meant to let it get out. But the fact it came out is evidence that it was in there. If you pull the trigger on a gun and it fires, it was loaded. Genuinely empty guns don't go off. It's the gun you think is empty that is not empty. That's the most dangerous of all. It's when you think that you're not loaded, and then you are loaded, and then all of a sudden some circumstance pulls the trigger. This is when we get the explosion. But if there's an explosion, it was loaded. Let's take a very, uh, let's take a very uh, simple little illustration out of childhood. I know it's mean, and uh, we should have been prosecuted by the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. I guess snakes are included among animals. But when I was small, I lived in an area where um, there were a great many garter snakes. The only snake we had in that part of North Dakota, and a great many garter snakes. And they were very numerous in the spring. We'd collect them in buckets and play with these things. We didn't play with the big ones, just with the little ones. And uh, sometimes that we decided to, we'd torment one of the larger ones until we thought it was dead. But we had a very good way of finding out if it was dead or not. We poked it with a stick. If it wiggled, it was not dead, not in our book. When it was dead, it didn't wiggle. It's as simple as that. If we have genuinely died to sin and you poke us, we don't wiggle. If we flare back, if the gun fires, if the rabbit shows up, it was there all the time. Simple as that. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you want your speech to clean up, clean up your heart. If you want to not be resentful on the outside, get over being resentful on the inside. If you want to get over speaking of lust and uncleanness on the outside, clean up the inside. Simple as that. When a person is vile, profane, vulgar, pornographic, evil speaking, it's because that's what he is inside. His words picture what he is. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I think we said enough, and we can go on to the next subject. Now we trust that you've taken your notes and you're now ready to take our TV Bible exam, which is coming right up. Jesus said to Simon regarding the woman who anointed his feet, Her sins, which are many, are forgiven her, for she much. to Simon regarding the woman who anointed his feet. Her sins, which are many, are forgiven her, for she loved much. by his emphasis on the role of A, women, B, men, or C, children. by his emphasis on the role of A, women. 